Okay, so hello there little shrimplings. So I found something rather concerning on uh, Wikipedia, which is sort of a, some pseudo-scientific, pseudo-philosophical even, uh, uh, mumbo jumbo, frankly, uh, called fuzzy logic. This is, this is highly upsetting to me. So, you look at, yeah, look at this, fuzzy logic. So basically what this is, it says that it's a mini do 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 uh, where truth value may range range between completely true and completely false. What is, what's all that about? Like how, that doesn't make any sense. You can't have partly true or, or partly false, right? That's just, it just doesn't fit. You just can't, I mean, how do you go anywhere with that? Oh, well, so if it's true, you do one thing. If it's false, you do the other. If it's in between, well, what do you do? And this is related, this is related to the, the Sorites paradox, or the paradox of the heap, right? Where, oh, you keep it, they call it a paradox. It's not really a paradox, it's really a puzzle for the simple-minded. Where, oh, you've got a heap of sand, you take one grain away, it's still a heap of sand, you keep taking away grains, right? It gets smaller and smaller, and it's still a heap. And then it's like, whoa, well, you've got one grain of sand left. Is that a heap? Well, yes, because otherwise the world falls apart around you. You have no way to distinguish between things. You have to have um, boundaries between concepts. Otherwise, otherwise, you don't. You have no scaffolding on which to to rest any any ethical system. Any uh, oh. That's my, uh, that's my social worker calling me there. Need the, uh, hold on a second here. I'll get to go grab my phone. Hello? Hello? Hey, Jerome, it's your social worker. Yeah, well, so, so you... I didn't want to call you, but I'm really sick and no one else is answering. Yeah, you don't sound good at all. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm really sick. So what? So I, what are you calling just, me for? What you call? What are you to, calling? What just, are you calling me for? I just need you to run an errand for me, Jerome. I need you to pick something up. Yeah. It's like a pizza. Oh, okay. Well, that sounds exciting. Yeah, I'll text you the pizza place address and my address. Oh, yeah. Did, does that make sense? So you text it to me then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. W will that work? Okay, Jerome? that sounds good. Jerome, is that going to work? Okay, I'll be right there. I'll be right there. Okay, so I made it to the pizza place. So I just gotta go in and get the pizza. Oh, 
Who are you? How'd you how'd you get into my vehicle? I'm Jeremy Crockett, Jerome. Jeremy, what'd you say? Jeremy? I'm your conscience. My conscience? Every hero needs a conscience on its adventure, Jerome. It's adventure? So are you gonna be like my mentor figure, like my guide? Yes. Always let your conscience be your guide, Jerome. That sounds like a good strategy. So we gotta deliver this uh, pizza to my to my social worker for her. I got her address here on the GPS so we can get to the uh, get to her house there. Jerome, the as the hero in this adventure, you need to find your own way. You can't have everyone leading you around by the nose like you're a little five-year-old child. You gotta find your own way. Yeah, that seems right. That's why. So, so I gotta sort of. I gotta find my own way. I gotta find my own way to her house. Okay. So so the first step is to get on to the highway so that we can go faster. Here we go. Okay. I'm I'm embarking on my journey. This is the into the unknown part. This is that's where we are in the in the thing there in the hero's journey. And there will be trials and tribulations and and temptations and. And uh, I'll, I'll go into the underworld and rescue my my father, and I'll be I'll die and be reborn and transformed, and then I'll journey back out of and we'll deliver we'll give her the the we'll give the pizza to my social worker like she asked me to, and I'll do that successfully, and I'll and I'll complete my hero's journey and be properly actualized in the world. definitely descending into the unknown underworld region from the known into the unknown because I I don't know where we are I don't really know how to get where we're going I don't know where my pen went I wish I knew Can you help me look for it for a second here I I swear I had it on me just a moment ago and I can't find it now Germany, that's our supernatural helper. It, it's guiding us along. The, it's showing us we're going the right way. The blinking light, it's like a star in the in the old, uh, you know, the star and the guiding. That fits in with the holiday oh, theme. Oh, oh, yeah, the, the, the star that led the shepherds all the way to America. Where they found, um, where they made Halloween for the spook, for the holiday special that we're doing. So, so that's with the holiday theme, so that's great. That's our supernatural holiday themed guide. It's like a Christmas tree, it's very symbolic. So, so Germany, I, 
how how should I go about driving in the first place? Like, how should I approach driving? Well, Jerome, you should follow the rules of the road and try to pay attention, especially to other drivers. Okay, so if I so if I I follow the rules of the road, I pay attention, and I'm careful, then I won't. That's how I'm going to avoid making mistakes. Because I don't want to. I don't want people to honk at me and, and get angry at me. Well, following the rules. It can't 100% guarantee you won't make mistakes, but it's it's just like increasing the probability you won't that make mistakes. That sounds like fuzzy logic to me. Probability? Is it going to help or not? That's what I'm wondering. Well, you know, I'm formulating a question here. So how should I drive? That's it's a simple question. How should I drive? Well, that's a good question you formulated, Jerome, and I'm sure it's got an answer, but I I don't I don't got that answer. But I still I need to know how you know, how I go about driving so that people don't honk at me. You're saying follow the rules of the road, but that doesn't work all the time. Maybe I should break the rules of the road. I should be radically individualistic and I should just sort of drive how I'm gonna drive. You know, maybe that's the way to do it. Well, but a lot of times when you break the rules of the road, it makes other people honk at you. It causes accidents. Well, yeah, that's right. And then, and then you've made a mistake. And even, I mean, they're gonna blame me for it, whether I'm radically into individualistic, and I'm, you know, I'm saying, well, I don't, I don't follow your rules, Bucko Jim. But they're still gonna blame me for it. So what do you do about that, huh? Man, I'm hungry. I, Germany, why don't you get? Oh yeah, we got pizza back here. What, can I have some of that pizza? Oh, this is mighty good pizza. You know, I, I think I'm just gonna follow the rules of the road to a T, you know, because then if I follow the law, then even if something bad happens, I won't feel that guilt for my mistake in the pit of my stomach. I'll just say, you know what? I was following the rules and that's the best I can do. So I'm not responsible for what happened. Whatever, you know, whatever might hypothetically happen. Well, but sometimes there's unwritten rules. Un that sounds like more fuzzy logic to me, quite frankly, Germany. I don't know that well, you're even that good of a conscience if you're going to keep giving me these fuzzy laws. I'm trying to help you, Jerome. What, help me get arrested for breaking the law? Is that what you're trying to do? That doesn't seem... That doesn't, oh, that's not the wiper. Where's the... Jerome, you see, even if you're following all the written rules of the road, if you're not paying attention, you, you could be liable for an accident, and then you should feel guilty, because it is your oh, fault. Oh, but that's no, but if I was following the law, then what? So, okay, here's how I see it. Either I follow all the laws, and that way I'm not guilty for, for problems that occur on the road, because I was following the laws, so it's not on me, it's on, it's the, I was a victim of the environment I was in, all right? Or, I just say I'm radically individualistic, I don't follow, I follow only my own rules, and the only rule I have is that I don't follow the rules, and then that's how I drive, and then that way I'm, I'm just so strong, and my, my will to power is... Oh hey, that sign says rest area soon, that's, we should stop there, don't you think, G Germany? Oh, I, so? I don't know, Jerome. Oh. I, I think we'll stop. I think we'll stop there. A little, just a little rest break on the journey. That's some. Um, that's part of the hero's journey, right? Like a, a rest, a rest stop. If Which you the, say so, Jerome. The rest stop part of the hero's journey. Okay, I'll be right back there. Oh, all right, back on, back on the road, right? Right, Germany. Okay, here we go then. Why are you looking at me like that? You've been looking at me like that since we got back on the freeway here. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that look. Jerome, you abandoned your task. I, ab I, I had to go to the. It was necessary to for the rest area. I had to do the rest area there for for a break. You know, I, that's that's justified. Your system of thought has led you astray, Jerome. You abandoned the status quo of fuzzy logic, but you got nothing to replace it with. I do feel a deep ideological void down in the pit of my stomach. I don't know what to do, Germany. I don't know I don't know how to proceed because I, I succumbed to the temptation because I, I had no framework to within which to make decisions. Well, Jerome. Since you abandoned the traditional way of thinking and the structure that 
helped you make decisions, you got to make your own. You got to come up with something new that works better. I have to form my own. How do I go about that? I mean, fuzzy logic obviously doesn't work. But I don't, I mean, uh, maybe I'll just try to reverse it around there. And then that'll that'll work because it's because of... Uh, it well, because if it didn't work before, it's the opposite. It has to work, right? That's true because fuzzy logic work doesn't work completely. It completely doesn't work. So that means that, that the opposite would completely work. So that's good. That's a good, that's a good way to approach this here. In the fuzzy logic there, we've got... Oh, something's not necessarily in one category or the other, but that's a bunch of bull hockey. So, so everything's, you know, it's all clearly dichotomized. It is or it isn't, because that's reality. That's the way it works, is that it is or it isn't. Another thing that we know, you've got your logic, your deductive logic, which, which leads you through decisions. Okay, so we've got that and that's solid. And then we've got either intuition, a priori intuition, or sense data. And sense data is unreliable. So we gotta use a priori intuitions as our basis. Okay, because of what we learned about fuzzy logic, you could say, oh, an intuition is partly true. No, an intuition is either true or not true. So the truth value is either one or zero, right? All the intuitions that are true have a value of one, so it's equal weight. You start with your intuition, and then you start reasoning your way through the logic, then you get to a conclusion, and then say hypothetically the conclusion contradicts another intuition you have. Well, the truth values are equivalent, and logic doesn't add truth value, it just advances the initial one. So you've got one versus one, hey, that's, that's the same, so you gotta work back and figure out where your logical error was made. The world is coherent, so your intuitions don't directly contradict each other. The problem is in your logic. So so if you reach a point, are you following me here? Yeah, yeah, I, I think I'm, oh wow, look at that sign there. Oh God, oh this is one of the danger, this is an, an enemy to face, a trial and tribulation, the dangerous falling rocks that are that are coming, uh, that, you see any rocks? Uh, what do rocks look like again? You know, large and deadly, and uh, anything large and deadly. That, oh that my god, is that a rock? Look well, at yeah. all those rocks coming at us! Well, uh, but they're not really, they're not. That one's huge! It's true, they are sort of, a, they are sort of uh, coming at us, aren't they? Yeah. But none of them are hitting us, so I guess we're evading them? We, we're avoiding the danger, Jerome. You're passing your trial. Oh, that's good. Well, that's great news. So I'm, so I'm worthy. By, by, this, by this metric, at least, you know, I'm, I'm a, I've evaded the danger, so that's good. So, so good. Man, Germany, that, that near-death experience there really cleared my mind, and I've, I think I've resolved something with my, with my new system to replace fuzzy logic. Oh, yeah? So, so you know the issue with your intuitions have the same, the same truth value, right? Of one. Right. All, okay, all truth it, values are one. All the right. Yeah. If it's if it's true, I mean, not all. That would that would mean contradiction if they were all one. So some of them are zero, but all oh. the true ones are one, right? Okay. So all the values are either one or zero. Yeah. Okay. So and all so you can you can find the totality of truth. Right, that would have a number. That would have a, a total, a sum of all the ones. You sum them all up and then that's the number is the totality of truth, right? Okay. So, so are some of the truth, some of the truths have a value that's not one? Well, no, not, nothing that's true. That would all be, those would be zero. Those would be falsehoods. No, but like a truth might have a, a three or a seven. No, no, they're not all the same weight because they're all the same level of intuition. It's all just intuition. A single intuition, truth value of one. Add it to the sum of total truth. Oh. Okay, but I'm going somewhere else with this. So, what I'm thinking is, all of truth, it's a big thing. So yeah. it's got to be as big as possible. you got to maximize truth, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, but you can't have contradictions. It's like a democratic principle. So if you have intuitions, two and one, and the two are in agreement, but one of them contradicts, then you just gotta get that, get rid of it. It's zero, it's not true. Because truth is consistent with itself, oh. right? So then you do that with all of them. 
and, and you add them up, and then there's a finite number, and that's the value of, of all truth summed up, right? That, does that make sense? So if, if one group of truths has a bigger truth value than the others, then the other one's not true anymore. Right, so, so it's the principle of democracy. You're maximizing truth value. So just oh, get rid of the one okay. that doesn't work. Okay, I, I gotcha. Oh God, Germany, do you see that? What? Is that what? Rufus on the side of the road? Rufus? Who's Rufus? My my companion through the whole through the journey. He was my my dog sort of thing, like a dog companion sort of thing. And he's on, and he's been he's been turned into roadkill, Germany. Oh that's, no! That's that's horrible. Oh, that's real bad. That's the worst. We gotta we gotta go give him a proper burial. I'm All right, turning you're gonna around turn here. Around? Yeah, All we'll right. go back and we'll give him a proper burial. All right. Let me just turn around here. I'm coming for you, buddy. Oh, he's in bad shape. Oh, he doesn't look good at all, Germany. Oh, no. Oh, Rufus. My companion. How could I let this happen to you? It, is he dead, Jerome? I don't think he made it. I'm so sorry, Rufus. I don't know what I could have done to prevent this, but... It's just not fair. It's not right. We're gonna give you a proper burial, little buddy. Nice little quiet spot here in the ditch. A little across a marker for him for oh we'll, we'll just leave it's all right Rufus you were the you were the best uh, most faithful companion and uh, you'll be you'll be sorely missed little buddy I can't look at him oh, oh god I'm gonna miss him so much, Germany. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without... Oh no, I forgot the pizza box. Hold on a second. I'll be right back. God, it's so unjust. Can't believe we lost Rufus. That was, he was a real shame. I don't know if I can go on. I have to go on though, so I gotta figure out a way to get through this, man. How am I gonna let go of Rufus? I mean, for God's sake, I, I can't let go of Rufus. I couldn't even let go of the pen. I. Oh yeah, I'm where, where did that pen frankly, go? Frankly, I'm still convinced it's somewhere in the car here. I. Oh. Can you look around a little for it? Hey. I just...
think you need to just let go of the pen. I don't think it's coming back. Yeah, just like Rufus. Oh God. How do you let go of? I mean, it's not like he deserved it. Well, maybe I can convince myself he deserved it. You know, that would work. Well, yeah, maybe he did deserve it. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if the world is just, he must have deserved it. He deserved it. Prove me wrong. Oh, I, I, yeah, it's a real good point. I don't think I can prove you wrong. I, it's an unwrongable claim. You can't prove it wrong. Yeah, if you can't prove it wrong, it's got to be right, right? I mean, that fits in with our with our sort of replacement system for fuzzy logic here, where it, where it's either it is or it isn't, you know, it's one or the other. Right, so it's, it's either true or it's I false. Think this seems this seems coherent to me. I, I guess Rufus deserved it. I mean, it's a shame that I had that relationship with him, but but you know, you get what you get what's coming to you, and what was coming to him was it was coming at 70 miles an hour, and it wasn't paying attention, and that's that's just the way of it, you know. That's a real shame, but but it's not a shame because he deserved it. So I gotta let go of him, even though I and I'll I'll be able to. I just have to align my emotional state with the intellectual truth that I've that I've arrived at using logic. I just gotta bring him into alignment. Just pound him into alignment. Hey hey Germany, I'm getting kind of tired. I've been I've been driving for like eight hours. I'm I'm sort of getting fatigued here. Could you? Could you uh, take over for a little while here and drive for a bit? Oh, that's a great idea, Jerome. You always got to let your conscience take the wheel. You want to switch over then? I'll yeah. Just, I'll pull off and we'll switch over. So that's good. Okay. That sounds great. Yeah, okay. So I'll just, I'll pull off here and we can, we can switch off. Just do a Chinese fire drill here. Take a little bit of a nap. Germany? Germany, did we, what happened? We crashed? Germany, you okay? Hey, talk to me, buddy. Germany, what's going on? Hey, man, hey! Never stood a chance. So as I've been walking here along to to deliver the oh boy to deliver the pizza to my social worker, I was thinking a lot about about efficiency in in philosophical thinking. Because I think I don't think people think that efficiently in general. Uh, I think you can use the rules of logic 
to, to reach a conclusion in a, in a more effective way than people often do. And I've, I've got a strategy for this and I've dubbed it propositional consolidation. Oh, it's getting chilly, sun's going down. The way formal logic works is you start with your premises and and then you go along and and you you reach a conclusion using the using the principles of logic. So and you can whatever you can start with whatever premises you want, you know, because you can't justify your premises. You just you just make them what you know is true, okay? And and you can't justify them and you start with those and you reason your way to a conclusion. Right? Okay, so the issue with that is you start with what you know is true and then you reason your way along and then you reach a conclusion that maybe doesn't make sense or you don't like it or doesn't, it doesn't seem true at all. So that's an issue. The issue with it is efficiency. You, your, your propositions are all, are all wiggly wob, wibbly wobbly and squishy. You need to consolidate them, collate them. So a propositional consolidation is where you, you take all your Take all your starting propositions and you, you figure out what conclusion you're aiming at to reach to reach at the end. And you just you take that conclusion and make that your premise. You start with that, and then it goes along like, okay, here's my premise, and then therefore here's my conclusion. It's highly efficient. Your all your propositions are consolidated into one statement. And you get to believe what you are, what you already, what you need to, what you know. So that's good. I think we can use the this new pro -hop propositional. You know, I may be in extreme pain. And I'm going to die, but at least I have a coherent worldview. Oh God! Oh. 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 Father! You've done well, Jerome. Your journey is now complete and you may rest. Finally achieved a coherent worldview. Your journey is now complete. Oh, so, uh, so I guess I should go, just go live my life, huh? And just really make the most of it. Now that I'm out of the out of the matrix here. Oh. You know, being plugged into the matrix for so long, I think uh, I think it's time for me to sort of <clears throat> get back in touch with nature, Germany. I think that's what I should do. Don't know how I'll go about that, but that's. I think I need to not not be so alienated from the natural world as harsh and horrible as it is. Merry Christmas, Jerome. I thought this was a Halloween special.